tucked inside the Patagonia Mountains here in southern Arizona, right beneath my feet, are massive metal deposits that could shape the future of our country's electric technology. And this mine plans to bring those to the surface, including some metals that haven't been mined in the United States for over 50 years. Now, all of this, though, not without environmental and health concerns from those that call this place home. As rich as the Patagonia Mountains are up top, there are more than 100 federally endangered, sensitive, and threatened species in these mountains. They hold treasure below. But the zinc facility will be built here. What you're looking at is a more than $2 billion investment. The South 32 Hermosa mine plans to pull up 400,000 tons of zinc and manganese a year. The U.S. government also pumps $20 million into the project as it would make the country self sufficient on manganese, which is used to fortify steel and is a key component in electric vehicle batteries. So it touches our everyday lives, but uh, they're two of the critical minerals where we're most reliant on foreign sources. And in the case of manganese, um, you know, it's places like China. Manganese hasn't been mined in the U.S. for more than 50 years. There's a big difference between what mining looked like 100 years ago versus now. Absolutely. And some of that is good, but we need water information. To get to the metals, South 32 says they need to drain parts of this mountain. The Arizona Department of Water Resources says the mine will use around 7,000 acre feet of water a year. That's enough water to supply 21,000 single family homes. We've also done a lot of baseline work on biodiversity and water to understand and make sure we're not having adverse impacts on those resources. The company says their underground mine will use significantly less water than old, large, open pit mines. All that water taken out is treated on site and then released into nearby streams, which ADEQ requires to be tested several times a year. A federal environmental impact study is in the works, with a draft expected in May. Then there's the air. We do not intend to be a sacrifice zone here. The Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry says manganese can cause serious neurological effects. But there aren't any federal or statewide air quality standards for the metal. How are you guys going to monitor that and make sure that there aren't those impacts on people? Yeah, so part of part of the advantage we have is being uh, the largest miner of manganese in the world. We have a lot of experience with how you do this elsewhere. Um, and so we've done a lot voluntarily that's not necessarily required by law. The company promises to set up air quality monitors in town and on site, as well as cover the metal at all times. ADEQ says initial air modeling showed the expected amount of manganese in the air fell below the guidance given by the agency for toxic substances. We're confident that it uh, can be done safely. Locals want their own data. And this is a very high end particulate matter monitor. Working with scientists at U of A and ASU to independently track air pollutants. We're not sure what's going to happen. I pray that nothing happens. That, you know, the mine goes in and we don't have, you know, we don't have dust, we don't have heavy metals in the air, but let's be sure. Environmentalists have filed lawsuits, one trying to revoke the air quality permit, which was approved in August, and another against further mineral exploration in the mountains. Right now, local government leaders and the company are negotiating an agreement outlining all protections and benefits for the community. If South 32 can promise just a few things and follow through, they'll protect our water, they'll protect our air, no citizen is harmed, no worker is harmed. If they can deliver on that, then fantastic. Then they, they can actually call themselves a 21st century mine. Lillian Donahue, ABC 15, Arizona.